morning. Um, I'm Becky Burton, and I've been attending North Star for a while now. Um, a lot of back and forth, but most of you know who I am. Um, I grew up in Pulaski. I actually grew up in a very small church, um, Pulaski Presbyterian. And um, I just had a really close family, and it was a really good environment. Um, I loved the youth group that I was involved in. Um, we would have Bible study at five o'clock in the morning before school, and we were just all like family. And um, we'd have game nights, movie nights, potlucks. Just it was just a very tight knit community, and the youth group that I was a part of was just awesome. Um, like I said, everyone was like family. So it's so easy for me to have a close relationship with God at that time because I was constantly surrounded by it. Um, the end of my sophomore year of high school, um, my parents told me that we were going to move to Salem. And I was excited but at the time, but then reality set in when we got up there. And I was so nervous about starting in a new school and a new church and a new home. Um, we started attending a church up in the Roanoke area, and I instantly began to get involved. Um, I made a lot of friends there. I was part of the praise and worship team. Um, everything just quickly evolved, so it was, again, so easy for me to feel like I fit in and have a close relationship with God. Um, we went there for several months, um, but my parents were actually a part of a separate service and they just felt like they needed something else spiritually. So we moved churches um, again. And I was pretty resentful of all the change that was happening around me. Um, I'm naturally just very introvert, so I had anxiety about starting a new church, and um, this was actually all before school had started. Um, the youth group at the new church was really big. And um, when I went there, I had my little sister that went with me, but um, I pretty much just stuck with her. And I just, I didn't want to be forced to go anymore. Um, I kind of gave up and honestly just kind of put my relationship with God on a back burner. Um, I blamed, like I said, I blamed my shy personality. And I did factor in, but um, I was mainly just upset that I didn't instantly fit into this church. And, um, but anyway, so my relationship with God really started going downhill. Um, in my senior year of high school, I met a guy that was in one of my classes. And um, I instantly got swept off my feet. I got so wrapped up in the idea that he was the only thing that mattered, um, the typical first high school relationship. So dumb. Um, and um, I just began to lie to my parents and skip classes and sneak around. And um, I was just trying to find happiness, and I would risk anything to have it. Um, my parents did try everything that they knew that they could do. Um, but. I was stubborn and I was set that I was going to do it my way and um, I thought I was an adult and I really still didn't need my parents but at that age, I mean I was 17 so I was like no, no thank you, like I can make my own decisions. Um, I was actually sent to California halfway through my senior year of high school. Um, I came home from school one day and my parents sat me down that weekend and told me basically to pack my stuff. Um, so I moved to California to live with my um, brother who's a youth pastor. And I was, I made the best of my circumstances. I mean, I didn't have a decision. I had to finish high school. So I went, um, started going to that school that the first couple weeks I just kind of I was actually kind of sad to admit, but I just like would cry every day after school and it was just, um, it was just like, it was a good situation after the first few weeks after I realized like I'm here, 
until I graduate, I might as well, you know, try to fit in and try to make friends. Um, so look, fortunately, I did find a lot of friends that were a part of my brother's youth group, and they welcomed me with open arms, and um, we went to like a youth conference, the Choir of the Fire, um, up in California, or over in California. And um, so that was, it, I had a lot of healthy relationships, and I was just very um, back and forth still on whether or not I wanted to pursue a relationship with God, um, but realistically, I knew that as soon as I graduated, I was coming back to be with this guy that I had met in Salem. We stayed in contact, even though my parents told me not to, and just such a bad situation. And um, when I did come back, um, because everyone else could see that this wasn't a good relationship, we didn't have a place to stay um, when I would go up to see him in Salem. So sometimes we'd sleep in the car or sometimes even outside. Um, after a few months of this, the unhealthy relationship was severed, fortunately. And um, although at the time, of course, I was devastated. But looking back, I'm so, so thankful that this was the case. Um, I started working at a restaurant and um, was immediately like sucked into a party lifestyle. Um, I was just still seeking happiness and anything that would fill it, and I turned to alcohol, and um, and I lived just waiting, basically waiting for the next time that I could hang out with my friends and have a good time. Um, and I met then I met Brandon, my husband, and that was it. Um, I fell in love with him so quickly and I was swept off my feet. I just loved how he made me feel and um, but we got we got pregnant after about five months of being together um, and reality hit really hard. Even though Brandon was supportive and assured me that we would be fine, I did become uncertain of the future. I mean we had only known each other for those few months um, and he was a genuinely good guy and still is and he's an amazing father and um, we've been brought through so much and we have two kids now and we're married and I just can not be more grateful for him um, but in the midst of all of this I'd heard of a small group of people meeting at Kaiser for church um, I actually heard about it through my mom who I guess heard about it from Debbie Van App and Debbie, Bobby, and Nancy actually went to Presbyterian um, with me. So she's like one of my second moms. And um, anyways, I had heard about this group meeting together and I didn't know that I needed God back in my life. And um, I did only want him in a part of my life, but I started going, um, I became a member pretty quickly and I just wanted to feel like a part of something, again, a part of a group of people. Um, I still wanted to hold on to my old life I created for myself. Um, I was just having too much fun. It was a very much live how Becky wants to live and do what makes me feel good lifestyle. And I would go on Sunday or just when I felt the need to go. Um, and all the other days of the week were mine and how I wanted to live. And when I got pregnant um, the first time, some people that were concerned for me actually pulled me to the side and um, just talked to me about they're just concerned for me and for the life that they've seen me. Um, I was just choosing myself and not God. And um, so anyways, I quickly realized that North Star believes in holding each other accountable. So I pulled away, basically thinking that these people don't need to know my business outside of the church, um, and was pretty angry and bitter about that. Um, over the next few years, um, my heart was hardened, Sim simply didn't have time for church, and I really wasn't interested. Um, I kept myself busy with work and the kids, um, but I had gone to a really dark place. Um, I just felt 
unhappy, even in happy circumstances, like me and Brennan got married, and of course I have my kids, and I was blessed with so many things that I didn't deserve, but you know that feeling of just emptiness, even when you, in the midst of having all these things and being blessed, I still felt empty, and um, God really did open my eyes and started convicting me on how selfishly I was living. I couldn't love and respect my husband the way that he needs to be without God at the center of my life. And I couldn't be the mom that I needed to be. Um, I really struggled with anger and sadness. Like I said, in spite of all the blessings around me. Um, in fact, seeing just how blessed I was made me feel even more guilty. I knew I hadn't done anything to deserve the blessings in my life. And I knew that the only way to work through these emotions was to give my selfishness, my sin, and my back and forth lifestyle up to God. And sometime, it was like the beginning of this year, um, it was in the winter time, and so I was stuck inside with the kids, and I was just feeling at a very all-time low. Um, I started going back to North Star again, but this time it's different. Um, I was scared that people there would think, how long is she going to go? How long is she going to attend this time? Um, but as always, they did welcome me back with hugs and smiles. But this time was different, like I said. I knew that this had to be it, all or nothing. So I said, yes, Lord, and knew I had to open my hands and surrender my life, all of it. Um, in the beginning of the summer, I started attending big small group. We were learning about gospel fluency. Um, and basically, you don't do anything. When you let God clean you up internally, um, it really begins to show externally. And I just have been able to feel God move in my life so much over the last few months of complete surrender. Um, and when you love God as much as you love other things in your life, um, you just you can't help but to share that love with others. So that was kind of what we were learning about in big, small group. And that's really when it hit hard for me. It wasn't like when I first started going back to North Star. It was that small group of believers getting together and hearing each other's stories and really connecting. And that's really the only way that you can get connected. It's not just by attending church on Sunday, but you have to get connected. Um, anyways, but my story is basically... Um, it, I was just trying to find happiness and I was trying to find purpose and everything but God and we might have things in our lives that bring us bits of happiness but the reality is that when you depend on desires that this world offers you're always going to be left wanting more um, after searching elsewhere for so many years I've, I had begun to realize something pretty big in my life um, and that is our purpose, is to serve the Lord with all of our mind, our heart, and our soul. And um, so it's really, we are created in his image, so it's only fitting that when we are not mirroring Jesus' love, we don't feel complete, and it leads to us seeking purpose in other things. It's only when he reveals this to us that we can understand what a whole heart is supposed to feel like, and it truly is the best feeling. Um, just to be overflowing with love for Jesus and for others. Um, but I'm gonna wrap it up and just say that um, thank you to everybody who stuck with me over the years, um, just through my back and forth. And thank you for welcoming me back. Um, and then I wanna thank the Lord for saving me. Um, I was saved at a young age, but I really feel different. Um, and I just want to thank God for giving me a new life and a fresh start. And um, I want to say this. Every day that we wake up is a new opportunity to let God change who you are. Um, but you have to let him do it. You can't just put your mind to it and say, I'm, I'm going to change. You can't. Um, you have to let God do it. And you're never too far gone. Um, I thought I was for a little bit too far gone, but you're not. 
um, and God will come after us in his perfect timing and he'll wreck us and that's the reality. One day he will come for you and he'll wreck you in the best way possible. So don't wait for him to do it. And I wanted to end with this verse. Um, I liked the New Living Translation Bible's wording of Jeremiah 29, 13. And that is, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Um, so it takes your whole heart and surrendering your entire heart, taking a step of surrender, but you will discover the overwhelming peace, joy, and satisfaction that Jesus gives us so graciously. So thank you. That's my story.